Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. I'm back here in the main setup just in time for a potential multi-day severe weather and tornado outbreak, which we will be talking about uh, in great detail right here in a second. But first, I want to say a huge shout out to Chris Hall, Brian Allen, and a couple of other storm chasers who really helped the y'all squad show up in Norman, Oklahoma after the tornado that happened the other day. Lots of people lost their homes, had their homes severely damaged, uh, and we were able to deliver thousands of dollars uh, in supplies to those people uh, quicker than just about anybody else because our storm chasers were there right after the tornado lifted. So uh, we wouldn't be able to do that without you. Thank you to everybody who went to shopryanhall.com and got anything. Thank you to everybody who slaps the like button and subscribes. Everybody plays a part in this, and we couldn't do stuff like this without you. So with that being said, let's talk about this upcoming very concerning situation situation with this severe weather outbreak. Okay, so jumping right into it, what we're looking at here is the Storm Prediction Center's outlook for today, March 1st. Everybody in the yellows under a slight risk of severe weather from Dallas up through Little Rock, Memphis, and then of course just south of Nashville. This is mostly a hail and wind a threat, but there is a little chance of an isolated uh, tornado or two. Okay, we can't rule that out, uh, but this is a slight chance of severe weather. This is the day before the day because boy, let me show you tomorrow's outlook. A little bit more intense there with the big moderate four out of five area for areas just east of Dallas, near Sulphur Springs, Longview, over to Shreveport, Louisiana, and even near Hot Springs and Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Uh, this is rare. Day two, moderate. This could end up being a day one high risk. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it doesn't really matter because the parameter space is incredibly high here. Uh, we are going to see tornadoes tomorrow. I don't know how many, but a few of them are probably going to be big, nasty ones, uh, and we've got to keep an eye on that. In fact, let me show you the SPC outlook for tornadoes. Almost 2 million people there in the red with a 15% probability of seeing a tornado tomorrow within 25 miles of any given point in that zone. The yellow is going to be 10%. The brown is going to be 5, green 2, and then the hatched area here, the dotted lines that you see. Y'all see that? That is uh, significant. That's where we expect to see significant tornadoes tomorrow, potentially EF2 strength or greater. And we're not even done, okay? We've got a huge slight risk uh, on the day three outlook for Friday for portions of Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, East Tennessee, East Kentucky, even my house here uh, in Eastern Kentucky is under the threat for severe weather as we go into Friday. Okay, so this is what the radar could look like around 4 p.m. today, March 1st. Couple supercells up here near Dallas. You guys have been having storms all morning. They're going to get a little bit more intense this afternoon, okay? Down here around where Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Texas meet, we're going to see some monster hailers. I wouldn't be surprised to see some tennis balls out here as these storms move up to the north and east towards Little Rock, okay? You guys are in the path today for some pretty significant hail storms, some damaging winds. And once again, these are supercells. There's a little bit of nadir juice out there. They can spin and they might produce tornadoes. Now, we've got storms popping off all the way up here towards Jackson, Tennessee, through Louisville, Kentucky, up into Cincinnati and Ohio as well. These have a much lower chance of producing tornadoes, but hail and winds are still gonna be a problem out of those. Now, watch your location, watch the clock, okay? Here we are, 11 p.m. tonight, strong storms moving through Nashville, heavy rain all the way up into Charleston, West Virginia, and as far south as Greenville, Mississippi. The severe weather threat here is kinda low, but definitely some flash flood, some heavy rain some strong winds are still going to be possible as this moves all the way into eastern Kentucky and eastern Tennessee overnight towards the early morning hours on March 2nd this is where things get uh, a little bit more intense okay that was the appetizer what we're really watching is back here that's going to send moisture from the Gulf of Mexico flying north all right and uh, there's going to be a big warm front here and we're just going to see all heck break loose here as we go through the day on a Thursday so let me show you what we're concerned about first. We've got some supercells trying to pop up along that warm front as it moves up to the north. These could cause hail, some tornadoes definitely in and around the Dallas area. 
Uh, but watch what happens here as we get around 5 p.m. Eastern. This is the, the main feature, okay? This line that's forming back here near Abilene, that's going to pick up intensity and then eventually move into a very favorable atmosphere for tornadic production uh, around uh, 7, 8 p.m. or so here, right around Dallas. And then once it moves east of Dallas, it's going to get even more intense with the potential tornadoes. We do have some isolated sails trying to pop up out in front of the line, but it looks like this is mostly going to be a linear mode as of right now, but there will be multiple tornadoes in this line as we go through the day. We even think there could be some embedded supercells that produce significant tornadoes, especially right around here, around 11 p.m. between Tyler and Shreveport all the way up to uh, Texarkana. Uh, this is going to be kind of the sweet spot, I think, potential tornadoes as we go uh, into March 3rd even. Now, the tornado threat does start to die down a little bit the farther we go into the morning, but it's still pretty high here in southern uh, Arkansas portions of Louisiana, and you can see how the line's breaking up a little bit. That can allow for the supercells to take shape more easily, so that's something that we're going to be watching. We can lower our resolution a little bit and look at the NAM, and that'll take us just a little bit farther into the future here, but look at that. First of all, snow. We're going to have a little bit of a snowstorm back here in Oklahoma, Kansas, all the way up into uh, portions of Missouri and then even up into Chicago, uh, you guys are going to be getting in on some snow here. Just look at the full dynamics of this storm. Wow, just wow. And then as we go deeper into Friday, I mean, the, the severe weather situation just continues to get worse um, until, of course, we get into the overnight periods where it kind of dies down. And uh, this is going to be a problem in the Carolinas. This is going to be a problem down into Georgia. The dynamics for severe weather and tornadoes are going to be in place. And of course, I'm going to be live covering that too, even all the way on Friday if it's needed. And here's another interesting thing, okay? This, is, this map shows us the STP or the significant tornado parameter. The likelihood of conditions being favorable for tornadoes on a scale of one to 10. Watch what's happening along that warm front on Wednesday, okay? This is why we have some probability of a tornado tonight. The main show is obviously tomorrow. Look at that big giant uh, area where tornadoes could happen. Any supercell that forms out in that environment will produce a tornado. That's gonna be in place all the way through Arkansas. And then of course, it does die off a little bit before it gets into the deep south. If we go out a little bit farther on the NAM model, it ramps right back up as we get into portions of Tennessee, Alabama, Kentucky even, and then into Georgia as we go through the day on Friday. So not everybody's going to see a tornado out here once again, but um, I do think this is going to be a multi-day outbreak and we will be live for it. So make sure you subscribe and all that good stuff. And then of course, we are going to have snow on the backside in Missouri, all the way up to places just north and west of St. Louis. We're going to see anywhere from six to 10 inches of snow, a thin stripe through Illinois of eight to 12 maybe higher inches of snow even around chicago this will move back and forth a little bit as we go forward it's hard to tell exactly what's going to happen here but a pretty good snowstorm is in store for somebody around chicago and then of course into central michigan as well uh, we're going to see a large area with 6 to 12 inches of snow possible now this storm is going to try to skedaddle over to the northeast a little bit uh, but it's too early to tell exactly what's going to happen there. Uh, the, the models are a little bit all over the place. Uh, and as soon as they get a little bit more solidified on what they think is going to happen, I will let you know. Guys, there's a whole lot more I could say about this system. I could go on and on about the hodographs, the significant tornado parameter, the convective available potential energy, the helicity. But basically, what I'm trying to say is naders are on the way, okay? So I'm just doing my job here to try to give you a, a heads up. Not everybody's going to get hit by a tornado. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Just pay attention to the weather. Subscribe to my channel. Follow your local National Weather Service. Whatever you've got to do to not be surprised by the very, you know, worst case scenario situation that could happen. And just hope for the best, all right? Um, and of course, I'm going to be live with meteorologist Andy Hill and all of our storm chasers. And uh, we'll be here with you through the whole thing. So thank you guys so much for bearing with me during my time without a computer. And hopefully it doesn't explode again. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.